Okay, here we go with um, a review of unit N, growth and decay in physics. We'll start off with air resistance. So um, remember to pause and try these as we do, as I ask them. All right, so uh, let's first graph all the graphs of an object in free fall when there's no air resistance. So see if you can graph these and let's call down the downward direction, let's call that negative. Up will be positive. The downward direction is negative. See if you can graph the um, the position versus time, the velocity versus time, and the acceleration versus time. Go ahead. Uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Go ahead and pause. All right. I'm thinking that you paused. I'm hoping you paused. Okay, let's take care of the easiest one first. That's acceleration. We know that that has a constant negative acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. That says 9.8 meters per second squared, and it's negative. Okay, the velocity then, um, the slope of that graph has to be negative 9.8. So the slope is going to be constant, and it's always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And as time goes on, it gets more and more negative velocity. Okay, if we say that it's released from the zero position, and, and I didn't, so it doesn't matter where you start this, but I'm going to assume it's released from the zero position, and then um, it starts out with zero velocity, so zero slope, and then the slope is going to get greater and greater in the negative direction. See how that slope is getting more and more negative in the, in the neg negative direction. Okay, let's um, head on over to here then. How about with air resistance? You want to take a shot at these? Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Go ahead and pause. Okay, we're back. Okay, now uh, we'll start again with the acceleration first. Um, it starts out at negative 9.8 meters per second squared, but as um, time goes on, it gets less and less acceleration until finally it doesn't accelerate at all way later on. So it's approaching the zero acceleration um, at, t at time equals infinity, it actually reaches there. All right, so um, what would be the velocity graph then? What would that look like? Okay, well, the velocity graph, it's going to start from rest, and it's going to get greater and greater, but it, it's going to approach some constant velocity we'll call terminal velocity. And then the y graph, um, rather than going down like this, what will happen is it will start out by gaining speed. It has to start out with zero slope, and then it gets less slope. But at some point, it's starting to go in a straight line. Like as it gets close to, to terminal velocity, that's a straight line. It doesn't buckle up this way. I know it looks like it, but it actually is approaching some asymptote. And the asymptote, that slope of that asymptote is the terminal velocity. So the slope of that um, m for slope is equal to the terminal velocity vt. All right. Let's go on. Uh, if we have an object that's falling in air resistance, it's got a, um, a weight, mg, and then a resistive force, b times v, we'll say, and it's in the opposite direction. Okay, could you tell me what the acceleration is at zero seconds? Go ahead and pause and tell me what the acceleration is at zero seconds. Okay, well, at zero seconds, this force is zero because b times zero is zero, and so um, you just have mg over m and so it's just going to be g okay um can you tell me what the terminal velocity will be what's the value in terms of these quantities go ahead and and pause okay the terminal velocity occurs when mg is equal to bv so when mg the magnitude of it is equal to b times v then that v is terminal velocity so solving for v v sub t terminal velocity it's mg over b Okay, can you give me an equation for, uh, let's call downward the positive direction this time. We'll call down the positive direction. Can you give me an equation for uh, A as it changes with time? Okay, so that's going to be, um, it's going to start out with G. It's going to be a decay graph. It's going to it's gonna decay down to zero. So E to the negative, and um, this is going to be B over M times T. That, that, that constant there is B over M. It is if this is BV. If it's BV squared, then it's then it it's going to turn into 
you know, a different quantity. All right, so um, so I don't know if you just caught what I just said, but if you go really, really fast, this term actually is better described by the equation b times v squared. All right, um, what about the velocity, how it changes with time? Well, you're going to be approaching the velocity, if downward is positive, you're going to be approaching a terminal velocity. So this graph is going to look like this. It's going to be V terminal, mg over b, minus mg over b, e to the negative t, uh, b over m times t. Okay, so that's the, that's the equation for terminal velocity. Moving right along. Um, okay, so now we have an object that has um, some air resistance, but it's, it's sliding along to the right. And so, um, you know, there's an mg down and a normal force up, and those cancel. But then um, you slid this, and it's going to, it starts out with a speed v0, but the, the resistive force is, that, this isn't a force, that's just a v, but the resistive force is this way, and it's negative bv. Okay, can you, do you want to see if you can um, figure out what the initial acceleration will be of this thing at t equals zero? What will be the initial acceleration? Okay, the initial acceleration is just going to be uh, the uh, initial f net over m. So the initial f net is going to be um, b times v naught negative all over m. See, f net over m. And this is the original f net. There is no force pushing it to the right. There was in its history, maybe just a little while ago, something pushed it to the right. But this thing is, there is no force there. It's just an initial velocity. Okay, you want to graph what you think the v, what's going to happen to the v as time goes by? What will happen to the v as time goes by? Okay, so did you, did you try it? Go ahead and try it. Yep. All right, so it's going to start out at v naught, and it's going to go. It's going to decay to zero. Okay, um, you want to see if you can guess what the graph is going to look, or what the function is going to be. All right, well, let's just guess. Let's just say it's a. Uh, it's going to be um, the following. It's going to be the v initial times e to the negative uh, some constant times t. Okay, we need to do a little math to figure out what that constant is. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, just fire up a little bit of calculus. We're going to say that A equals F net over M. A equals F net over M. Um, but this is dV dt. That's what A is. F net is going to be um, negative BV all over M. That's the only force on it is BV. Let me get these, uh, the V and the DV on the same side. So DV all over V is equal to um, B, negative B over M times DT. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let me integrate both sides. Um, I'll integrate from zero, nope, from V naught, that's its initial, at T equals zero, that's that's what that's what the v is v naught, and then to some other time t, and this will be some other time v. All right, um, let's integrate this side. It's going to give me the natural log of the absolute value of v, and I have to throw in v naught and v. And this side is going to give me just negative b over m times t. Okay, I'm going to come up over here. Ooh, I'm not going to get this done in time, I don't think. So um, if this is going to be the natural log of V minus the natural log of V naught is equal to negative V over M times T. And then um, this is the natural log of V over V naught. We need some absolute values here. And then that's equal to negative V over M times T. And then um, what we can do is raise both sides. E, since this equals this, then E to raised to that will equal E raised to this. But these are inverses, so we just get V is equal to V naught E to the negative B over MT. Okay, that's it. I'm done.